150-year period in history called the growth of the large corporation and organization. We are now dismantling the large corporation and organization back in favor of the entrepreneur. And let me give, that, let me give some background on that. When I got out of business school, I was 22, graduated Wharton, top of my class, and I go to get a job. And I went to work at Citibank. And people said, Paul's going to Citibank? He's not a banker. He's this kid from Brooklyn immigrant. He doesn't fit there. But I didn't go to Citibank to be a banker. I went to Citibank because Citibank had the biggest computers in the world, IBM 370s. And I had learned a program. And with these IBM 370s, I could do cool projects. I could do amazing marketing and develop some really neat stuff. So I went for the technology because the unit of technology was an IBM 370 which filled an enormous room. And if you had those, you could literally take over the world in business. And they were a lot of fun to a young kid who was technologically oriented. Today, of course, the unit of technology is no longer a large computer. It's a PDA cell phone. It's a personal computer. In fact, individuals almost across the board have better, faster computers and personal smartphones than the large companies. In fact, many of you work for large companies who, <laughs> it's amazing, they're using computers five or eight years old and you requisition one every year and they pay you a salary, but they won't pay you to get better computers and equipment. And so what we see is the unit of productivity has shifted from the large organization to the smaller one. This is actually based on the work of an economist I write a lot about called Ron Coase. Ron Coase was an economist, and actually, was a, let me go back, he won the Nobel Prize in Economics in 1991 for a paper he wrote back in 1931. And here was the paper. Ron Coase in 1930 was 19 years old, a student at London School of Economics. <laughs> and he won a prize to come to the United States to study entrepreneurship. So at age 20, in 1931, he shows up in New York from London School of Economics, and now here he is, and he's gonna study entrepreneurs. He says, this is the land of Horatio Alger stories. This is where Henry Ford built Ford Motor. This is where Sloan built Sloan. This is Thomas Edison inventing everything and building General Electric and movie pictures and so many great things. And when he comes to America in 1931, he finds nobody wants to be Thomas Edison or Henry Ford or Alfred Sloan. They want to work for Thomas Edison. They want to work for Henry Ford. And this man from England, 20 years old, says, why would a person in the United States of America where your last name does not determine what job you have, go work for someone else? You could be a businessman. Why would you go give up your life and become a slave and just sell your hours and your whole life? And he tries to answer it, he writes a paper called The Nature of the Firm. And in the paper, he explained the River Rouge plant. The River Rouge plant was a 12-mile-long auto plant in Detroit. And in came coal, and out came finished cars. Why was it under one roof, 12 miles? Because when they took the coal and made the steel, and the steel was made wrong for the car, the assembly line, they could run up the road two miles and say, fix the steel on the car. Do you see how it all had to be under one roof? Because in the 1920s, there was no technology of communication. There were no computers, there were no phones. How would you run anything except if it was under one roof? And in the nature of the firm, Ron Coast analyzed this and he comes up with a model paper that says, based on the cost of two people doing business. He said, the right thing you need if you want to write a letter is go on the street on Wall Street and say, hello, $10, uh, who wants to type my letter? And people would come over, you pay them $10. But the cost of hiring them, paying them, teaching them how to use your typewriter, etc., was more than 10 bucks. So he said, because of that, economically, people would give up their freedom and go work in a large company. They'll only work 20% of the day. They'll sit around all day waiting for someone to give them the letter. But that's still more efficient. And he wrote in 1931. And that's why we're going to have large companies. And he predicted in 1931, million person and companies like General Motors and AT&T. Not only was it right, the paper was the standard paper in business schools to determine the formula. It's a complex formula based on the transaction cost of doing business with disparate individuals versus outsourcing. And that formula became the explanation for large companies. And it was standard in every business school for the next 50 years. And in 91, he wins the Nobel Prize for economics for the nature of the firm.